hi there and welcome back to another episode station road now today's episode is going to be a little bit different and i may have mentioned it in previous videos and that is my plight with this the rapido trans uk 15 xx so be warned this is a lengthy video and there is a lot of talking a lot of discussion and experiences and my opinions that i'm sharing with you about of course my experiences with this particular locomotive now my intention is not really to slam rapido trains uk but it may appear that way <laughs> during this video so i think without further ado let's just get into the plight that i've had with this model engine So Rapido's 15XX and on a detail front it is exquisite. The detail is extraordinary and of course the weight of the locomotive is incredible as well. So where on earth does my plight begin with this locomotive and I'll have to say this is probably really the first sort of new locomotive that I've purchased where I've actually encountered quite significant issues with it. So I know that a lot of other channels tend to go for the jugular with manufacturing companies when it comes to things that go wrong. Now this video is not about that. I don't want to give Rapido a hard time and take them to the cleaners as such or anything like that this is purely sort of my observations and really at the end of the day it begs a question within the industry are these locomotives just going too far is the detail at the expense of their durability worth all of this so I originally bought the 15XX last year and I did actually leave it a while before I actually opened up the box and got it out and started doing a warm-up session and just inspecting the locomotive making sure everything was as it should be. Now when I first opened up the locomotive everything was intact there wasn't any missing parts or bits broken off or anything like that everything seemed ideally in perfect order now when it came to the running of the locomotive that was a different question and the running qualities were absolutely shocking so of course i initially started out in dc i didn't fit a dc decoder i put it on my dc test track and started running it and it just wouldn't run it was so sporadic it would start and stop and I had to push and nudge it and only when I put the locomotive at full speed would it actually operate now unfortunately I didn't actually video that part of the process I went through which was around end of December beginning of January this year so I put it on the rolling road and put it at close to 100% power hoping that maybe it just needed a thumping good running in so that's what I did now as it was on the rolling road the of course the first observation that I did make was that the locomotive was clearly very happy because its tail was wagging like a trooper so there was clearly something wrong with the locomotive the wheels weren't set correctly or the gearing was out or the axles were bent or the quartering for the piston rods was out so i wasn't terribly happy almost immediately at that point so 
I did leave it on the rolling road feeding minutes in each direction hoping well this is clearly you know going to at least prove the running performance once I'd done that popped back on the test track nothing had changed it was stopping and starting it needed constant pushing and shoving and it really would only operate once I'd got well over 50% power so up to 60-70% power it would run but anything below that it would just keep stopping and starting so on closer inspection I thought this clearly obviously the contacts aren't connected correctly or something of that nature so I had a look and to my disbelief of the six spring loaded contacts to the wheels only three of them were actually touching the wheels so the interesting thing about this 15xx and I noticed that there are a few other manufacturers that have seemed to have adopted this method of contact pickup which is spring loaded push button knobs that are actually mounted inside the chassis and they push against the inside of the flanges of the wheel so it's not your traditional contact which is usually a copper leaf or copper sort of plate that is pushed against the wheel now when on closer inspection I looked at these contacts three of them were pushed into the chassis and there was just no way of releasing them of getting them out so that they would actually touch the wheels so there were three of them and I did some close-up photos of these because of obviously I was going to send this locomotive back to Rapido now I wasn't going to even attempt to try and get these spring-loaded contacts to pop out of the chassis I think I just would have been asking for trouble and with Rapido's warranty still under warranty I thought best to not mess around with it and just simply send it back so I sent the locomotive back early January with some photos and also some video footage obviously of its very wobbly running characteristics and they received that about a week and a half two weeks later they put it in their queue for their repair maintenance department now they did warn me that there was around about a four week turnaround for this and I thought wow does that mean that there is actually a queue quite a quite a long queue I guess of other locomotives that have been returned that also need fixing now to me I sort of felt there's one person on the job can't remember the guy's name if he was fixing maybe five locomotives a day so we're talking 25 locomotives a week so that means maybe there's a hundred locomotives in the queue now the interesting thing is I did actually email Rapido and did ask them because I had so many questions with their manufacturing and so forth whether they'd be interested to for an interview on Station Road now they didn't decline but then they just simply didn't respond at all so I'm actually making a whole lot of assumptions that could or could not be correct and of course that's probably not a good thing but if they're not going to offer any explanations then that's generally what people do they make assumptions so based on maybe they had a queue of 100 locomotives to fix in the grand scheme of things that might seem like a small percentage but to me that's a hundred more than what they should be having to repair so it did actually take closer to six weeks and they came back to me and the conclusion was that I was going to receive a full replacement locomotive so whether or not they were able to repair my locomotive clearly it was not an option and they were going to send me a replacement now the interesting thing is with this replacement the plot thickened even further so they actually compiled some photographs and also sent me some video footage of them testing the locomotive that I'm about to receive so this is before they dispatched it and 
it was clearly shown running around their test track in perfect running order they also tested all the wheels and proved that all the contacts and connections were working as they should be so i was feeling very confident and very happy with what they proposed to do and so i waited patiently of course for the replacement logo to turn up so that arrived probably about two months after the initial problem with the first locomotive now we have to factor in that of course i do live on the other side of the world so it generally usually takes a week between a week and two weeks for parcels to arrive from the uk so of course we have to factor in there's probably really about a month's worth of transit in there so the new locomotive arrived and I was very eager to, of course, open this one and not delay that just to make sure everything was okay. So the unfortunate aspect to the replacement loco was when I opened it and unpackaged it, there are a few spare parts floating around inside the ice cube. Now, one of them, of course, is the filler cap for the water tanks. Now, that's fine because they come out anyway because they're actually secretly hiding some screws that of course allow you to open up the actual body of the locomotive so that's fine that wasn't broken it had just obviously fallen out what i did find was broken was one of the buffers had snapped off and then there was this unusual part which i soon identified as one of the springs underneath on the inside of the wheels for one of the driving axles so i thought okay that's easy enough i can just reattach that the buffer a different story unfortunately that will require some form of super glue or something of that nature to fix that so on closer inspection on the underside of the locomotive i actually noticed there were two of these springs missing and I thought, where's the other one? So I've got one that was floating around in the box. Where's the other one gone? So I had a look and checked the other springs and they were all loose in some shape or form. They were wobbly, some were looser than others. And then of course one was detached from one end and and I sort of thought, how are these attached? What What's anchoring these in place? And it appears that they are little lugs that go in, but unfortunately, the lugs had actually snapped. So I can't reattach them unless I glue them. And when I sort of look at these little lugs, I think they're just too small. They're just too fine. And they should have been a lot more durable. Now, in the end, I decided, well, they're springs. You don't actually see them. They're, they're not actually visible when your locomotive is running around the layout. The only time you see them is you turn the locomotive upside down and have a look. So I just simply removed the remaining springs that were there, all the while realizing I still had one missing spring. So anyway, I thought, right, the next thing to do is, of course, as per the videos they sent me to prove that the locomotive ran perfectly well, I popped it on the track and started running it. And it did not run terribly well at all. It was like it was under a huge amount of strain. And I was trying to run it along the test track and it was sort of running at 50%, 60%, but it ran like it was at 10%. And I thought, God, what on earth? And I had a closer look and I found, of course, the other spring. It had fallen down between the wheel and the chassis on the center wheels and had jammed itself between the chassis and the wheel. And it took a fair amount to get it out. With a pair of tweezers, I managed to wriggle it out. So there was the extra spring that I couldn't find. So I popped it back on the track and tested it again and it ran perfectly. So at least 
I was appeased with that, that at least the locomotive was running in a much better condition than the previous loco I had and its slow running speeds and so forth were very smooth indeed. So it brings me to the question and the interesting thing is I have looked at other people's YouTube videos where they have bought one of these particular locomotives and interestingly quite a number of you have not actually had any problems. You have just popped it on the track straight out of the box and it's worked first time. So it's obviously not a I guess stemic issue that these locomotives have. It's clearly just a hit and miss situation with these locomotives. Unfortunately I ended up with two locomotives that had issues. Now one of the interesting things of course with these springs and I sort of felt well why have they come loose? Why if they broken off? Because they're tucked underneath the chassis. The wheels are protecting them and they're, they're right up underneath. I, I couldn't understand how they could have actually been dislodged and snapped. And I thought I'm going to take a closer look at the packaging. And the interesting thing is, is there is a ridge on the base of this ice cube packaging where the locomotive sits and the ridge tucks up underneath in between the wheels and lo and behold it's the perfect size to basically snap all of those springs. So the packaging design is at fault here because at the end of the day regardless of whether I live across the other side of the world a locomotive should arrive in one piece. So I took another closer look also with the buffer that had snapped off and that as well is probably snapped off because at one end where the smoke box is that this locomotive sits in its packaging there is a sponge that actually sits right up against the buffer beam and there is there is no room for movement between the buffers so if this locomotive is rattled around and pushed around inside this it's going to snap the buffers so the packaging is probably really the major component that's actually at fault I won't say the actual manufacturing process is possibly at fault. To a degree it will be the design to a certain percentage because at the end of the day, and this comes back to the same question I had at the beginning, is are these manufacturers just simply going too far with detail? Is it to the point where practicality just becomes nonsense in the sense that some of these components are just so brittle, so delicate that you almost really can't use the locomotive. You put it in a glass case, stick it on your shelf and just look at it because there's just too much detail on here or it's just not durable enough. So one of the other interesting aspects that I sort of thought was, well, that locomotive that they videoed for me showing it working perfectly and I had I thought well maybe they actually sent me a different locomotive maybe this is not the one that they actually videoed now i if that was the case I'd be kind of shocked so fortunately with a little closer inspection on their photographs that they sent me and the video I was able to, to determine that this was in fact the loco that was in their videos and do you know how I managed to actually figure that out because in one of their photos a nice clean side on shots one of the buffers has split it's got a fine hairline crack in it and you can see it here and it is evident on this model. So that's how I was able to prove that this locomotive is the one that they had in their video footage and sent to me. Now that begs another question. They would have been aware of the split or crack in the buffer or maybe not. 
maybe it just simply slipped their discerning eyes and of course sent it anyway so it's a quality control issue as well obviously things aren't really inspected very well so this buffer that has a split in it is likely possibly at some point simply going to break off completely so yeah it's just it's frustrating and I've got to consider from Rapido's point of view as well that of course they have, would have invested a vast amount of money in the tooling for this and getting the production underway and also taking a certain amount of risk with who they choose as a manufacturer and making sure that they do due diligence with their model when it comes to mass producing it so it kind of leaves us lot the purchaser the buyers the customers in this sort of situation where i guess in a way as much as you love to own a locomotive that's beautifully detailed there's a certain amount of apprehension as to when you open up the box how many more spare parts might be floating around other than what's in the accessories bag so i'm not sending this one back i'm not going to go through the same ordeal the the main thing is is it does mechanically operate beautifully so of course i have just temporarily reattached the buffer on this locomotive for now i will glue that in place so of course the other issue i believe is with the spring-loaded contacts now of course my replacement loco they seem to now be in pretty good working order all the contacts connect with the wheels but i wonder about the design for these contacts and it brings me to the question of why what is the point in this the traditional form of pickups or contacts of course is just a copper tab a spring-loaded tab that presses against the wheel this method has been around for decades and to a great extent works perfectly fine i have locomotives that are 20 years old with this form of electrical pickup and they're still going strong no issues at all and that's even with the bare minimum of maintenance and cleaning these types of pickups that i've sort of seen come in with various manufacturers and models where it's like a little wee knob or a button spring loaded button that is actually mounted in the chassis i can only actually see these being a significant issue after time because what they're going to do is they're going to fill up with grime and then they're going to get stuck inside the chassis so why do it why i i kind of feel like is rapido thinking that they're being clever but it's actually just not a clever intuitive design it's going to mess up i can just see track dirt dust and grime and things like that when it comes to oil and bearings and things like that you, you you're going to struggle not to end up with oil that gets into these little push button contacts and then that's going to attract the dirt then it's going to fill up then it's going to jam and i that it's just not practical i see no sense in this the other aspect and of course this is something that i'm going to finish off this video with is the dcc fitting for this locomotive now when i looked at the reviews and things before i even bought this locomotive it seemed like a relatively easy process so there are the filler caps on the water tanks which you remove and hiding underneath them of course screws to undo the body from the chassis now that's all well and good but then there's some other parts and it's the steam pipes that connect to the cylinders that in my previous model they are not fixed to anything they they just fell out when i took the body off when it came to reinstating the body with the chassis i had an absolute devil of a time getting them 
into place these steam pipes with the cylinders and of course the underside of the smoke box it, it was just a nightmare I, I couldn't understand it and I thought are these meant to be fixed were they meant to be glued in place and so we're going to do this on camera doing a DCC fit for this locomotive and I'll be curious to see whether it has the same issue because I did come across a video and I can't remember who it was where they did a DCC fit they detached the body from the chassis and I, they didn't seem to have the same problem these pipes steam pipes that run into the cylinders uh, they stayed I think as part of the chassis as opposed to part of the body so obviously maybe hopefully I'm thinking that that was just an issue with the previous locomotive I had so we'll get on to that now we'll do a DCC fit and we'll see how it goes so looking at the 15XX and referring of course to the manual here and there is two sets of screws so there's a set on the underside which is this image here and then hiding underneath the filler caps is another set of screws there so we'll undo these screws and take it from there so we've got our cradle here and I think we'll remove these screws here first. So Phillips screwdriver and we'll just undo these ones first. So that's the two screws on the underside of the cab and if we turn it over and underneath these filler caps which just simply pop off there is another set of screws and all the while while we're doing this I'm absolutely terrified of some of the detail breaking off so I think those screws are loosened So as you can see, as I'm lifting this up, the two steam pipes, which are these little pieces here, if I can get that into focus, come on, they just simply fall out and the other one's in there. So these are two steam pipes which connect between the smoke box and the cylinders and they just fall out now that's fine at the moment but I'll tell you what when it comes to putting those back in and the body back on it's an absolute nightmare so I'm just gently lifting this up and that's the other screw and here is our inside mechanism so this locomotive takes the next 18 decoder and the blanking plate is just in here so I'm just gonna put those aside move that out of the way got our two screws there that one's still got a screw in it so this is the chassis or the body I should say and as you can see this is actually die cast this part the cab is plastic but the tanks and the smoke box I believe are die cast so there's a bit of weight in this actually so taking a look at our decoder socket here we're just going to gently lift this out and that just simply pops off and that's our blanking plate so I'm using a Daypole Imperium decoder next 18 
Imperium 2 Dakota and I find these are quite good. This, these are actually uh, I think four or possibly even six function Dakotas these ones so don't take my word for it of course but we'll get this out of here and pop that out and these Dakotas are very small so we're just going to pop this in there's only actually really one way it can go right so that's our next 18 Dakota in there now this is where I'm rather puzzled by these steam pipes because these actually sit there's wee lugs in the top of the cylinders here with a little wee lug that sits in here and then the smoke box has some wee holes on the underside of it oh and the smoke box just fell off how about that I mean that's just bizarre so that smoke box is just that's plastic and it just pops off and the only thing that's holding it on is this wee pipe running through on top of the water tanks so yeah is that meant to be glued on there the the plot thickens with this locomotive it's really bizarre it, it's I just don't know whether it's been really terribly well thought through that I'm thinking should be glued but this is a challenge because what you've actually got to do is while positioning and holding these because these don't fit in here with a nice tight fit in the actual underside of the smoke box they they're just sort of you know I'd, I'd kind of prefer if these wee knobs on here actually fitted snugly within the hole so that they could actually just stay there and it makes me wonder whether these should have been glued in here and then of course the other thing I've got to consider now is both of these have fallen out I've got to make sure I've got the left and right steam pipes around the right way because they do actually have a small detail poking out at the side so I've got to make sure that that detail is either forward or reverse facing so I'm going to have to make reference to a photo for that and then these have got to go in here so yeah it, it's, you know it just begs the question right you know anyway what I'm going to do <laughs> I'm just going to pause this for a second. I'm going to just reference an image so that I can figure out which way these go around. We'll try and get these back in as I struggled with the first locomotive I had. And if it just becomes too difficult, then I might actually just put a wee smidgen of glue on these to hold them in place. And then it can sit down on the lugs that are in here because otherwise it's just an absolute nightmare. So referencing a photo of the locomotive it appears these protruding possibly some form of valve is reverse facing so they face towards the cab so that would mean for example this one here is the this side of the locomotive and that one is for the other side of the locomotive so when these are actually positioned in the top of the if you position them in top of the cylinders they don't stay there like the hole is too big for the lug and it's quite loose so you know it would have been nice if it was a tight fit you could position them and then reattach the body but they're not they're they're loose so and the same goes for the underside of the smoke box as well so let's just see how this goes so we'll pop this back on and we've just got to 
gently slide this on and of course the smoke box we've got to consider is loose and <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it should be glued right so that's positioned back on in the correct place and now we've got to get these steam pipes back into there so I'm actually going to need a pair of tweezers for this so I didn't have that handy so I'm going to get myself some tweezers so essentially what we've got to do is this has got to fit in there so I've got to lift this up a little bit and get this to slide in here now the interesting thing is this is not covered in the manual at all there's no reference to the fact that these are just loose and they come out so this is so fiddly and i guess i can lift up the smoke box a little bit but with this smoke box now loose it makes it easier but then this smoke box shouldn't be loose because there's no screws holding that so this is supposed to go in here so that's got it in there but the thing is there's two screws here and the two down there so that means there's nothing actually holding the smoke box on so so it's got one of them in in here but the problem you find and if i put this one in here i've got to lift this back up again and generally what happens when i lift this back up and the other one will fall back out again so it's just such a it, it's just a ridiculous design and surely the guys at Rapido the designers would have tested this and gone through it and sort of thought oh this is easy and if we find it easy then that means everyone else will find it easy but it's just it's not there's nothing easy about this and this smoke box keeps this smoke box should be glued And the other one's fallen out again so we've we've now got this drop back out so I'm not even gonna persevere with this because it's just ridiculous and as modelers we find this kind of thing frustrating and it shouldn't be as frustrating as this it should be a joy working with it with a model that you've spent a fair amount of money on so my remedy is the fact is that, that this smoke box shouldn't be loose like this so this hasn't been glued or if it has been glued it's the bare minimum and it keeps falling off and what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to put a little smidgen of glue on these glue these to the underside of the smoke box and the theory is that they'll actually just drop down into the holes underneath because otherwise it's just crazy stuff so taking a closer look at this as best as what I can actually see there does appear to be the remnants of some glue here that is on here but what has actually happened is of course this die cast section has been painted obviously spray painted or whatever with its finish that it's got and then they've glued the smoke box on and what's actually happened and you can probably just make out there little bits of the silver die cast metal is they've glued it and it's basically just pulled the paint off it's pulled the paint off the die cast so it's yeah the, there's methods that just big belief in that sense so i'm just going to put some very microscopic dabs of glue to anchor this back in place and then 
we're also going to actually glue these steam pipes onto the smoke box so they're ready to go and then we'll drop this back in place so I'm not going to use super glue because I think the super glue you know unfortunately it can leave residue and ghosting and super glue can be a bit brittle I might just use some really tiny amounts of zap glue because it takes a bit longer to dry it like it doesn't fix straight away it'll give me the opportunity particularly with these steam pipes to put a tiny little speck of glue in there which will hold them and then when I position it if I have if I've glued this slightly off angle then it's not going to fit in these wee indentations that are actually in the top of the cylinders so I've just used the absolute microscopic amount of this type of glue zap goo so it doesn't dry immediately and it's kind of more of a clumpy type of glue but just the absolute smidgen with a toothpick to apply so it doesn't fix straight away so if we take a look at this what I've done is glued these steam pipes I'm assuming they're steam pipes of some sort but anyway that's what I'll call them and I've glued them to the underside smoke box and of course they've got tiny wee lugs on them there now what I've also done is, is glued the smoke box back on as well so that is now fixed to the die cast section as well so we'll put this body back together now I've got a little bit of wriggle room here while this glue is, takes a little bit longer to set if I haven't positioned these exactly where they need to go then there's a little bit of movement in it so let's give this a go and if this works then I'm sort of wondering why on earth didn't Rapido actually do this in the first place with the model so we're just gonna slide this back on and bring this down and just check on these positions for these pipes here and I think they might they look pretty good actually I've just got a right that's that one in and are they in or not no they're not that's not in one's in and It's just so difficult this locomotive because you just don't know where to hold it without don't think that one's in what on earth was that that just came off like oh my god it's brass etched brass and it looks like some kind of foot plate of some sort or tread plate that's popped off anyway I'll get to that <laughs> oh, I see it's actually come off from around here that 
actually goes on top of the cylinder so these sections here these little wee miniature foot plates actually I'm not even going to move it closer to the camera because something else is going to fall off so we're going to have to reattach that with a bit of glue but it's getting these in you know making sure that they're in the wee lugs now the thing is I can't glue the bottom half of these steam pipes to the cylinders because then you know it's not going to you won't be able to get the body off again without having to break the join so I'm pretty sure they're in so before we go any further let's just get these screws back in here now there's two different size screws here actually the very small ones go into the water tanks and the slightly bigger ones of course go on the underside of the cab so let's just get the, these screws in now you might have noticed there I actually turn the screw counterclockwise first until you he feel or hear a clunk which means it's found its thread and then of course turn it clockwise and yeah, that sort of reduces the risk of stripping the thread on the screw or the hole so that's got those in and I'm pretty sure those steam pipes are now in there but what a mission you know it's just ridiculous a bit of glue there I'm gonna to have to clean that off with a toothpick but yeah it, it's it's just such a nightmare it's probably it's got to be one of the it's got it is the worst locomotive that I own that has these convoluted issues with it so the good thing about the zap glue is once it dries it's sort of almost like a rubbery glue and you can just simply pick off the excess and it of course doesn't leave any marks nor does it like super glue leaves can leave that sort of white residue the zap glue doesn't do that so we're just picking off this excess right okay so that's got the screws in the top in let's get the screws in underneath here right so you can see on this side where the sort of foot plate has come off so on the other side you can just see there's sort of a cross hatched foot plate on top of the cylinders and this side here it's just popped off so this as well needs to be reattached with just a smidgen of glue so I'll do that and then come back and evaluate this process right there we go wasn't that a nice easy DCC fitting so I've reattached the foot plate here with the cross hatch in it beautifully finely detailed etched component but it just popped off there was no force in here it, it just came off so the final touch of course is reinserting the water caps on here and I'm not quite sure which way around they go but I'll just pop them that way around some of these innovations are good for example using the filler caps to hide mounting screws you know it's a good idea and it works quite well and I think in the accessories bag they do actually include some of these spare so if you inadvertently lose a filler cap you've got a spare there and yeah I mean the detail of this locomotive is absolutely fantastic but but it, it's just it's just gone too far the 
springs underneath on closer inspection as I mentioned earlier I thought they were like little pins or, or lugs that go in that slot in it doesn't appear so to me it almost looks like they are part of the base keeper plate but the 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 fineness of how they're attached or how they are part of that base keeper plate is just too fine and they just snapped you I couldn't put them back on anyway because the, the the surface area to glue is so microscopic that they'll just break again and that begs the question when you're looking at the locomotive and a general view on your layout running around the track and even actually looking down on a on a lower angle you don't really see them and it, it just makes me wonder you know how much less would this locomotive be if they'd thought of a better way of doing that so there we have it that is the dcc fitting done and as you saw it really did become quite a mission and i'm very puzzled obviously by the steam pipes how they're not fixed to the underside of the smoke box and also the smoke box itself clearly wasn't glued terribly well so you would have seen earlier in the video of course there was some running shots included which of course I did actually after a run-in for the locomotive both in forward and backwards directions and by all appearances it was running quite smoothly now when I say back in that section where it was running beautifully I mean it was running beautifully compared to to the first locomotive I got that doesn't mean to say that it didn't have its issues as well so it's very fussy when it comes to dirty tracks so I did clean the track but it really picks up on even the most microscopic bits of dirt and grime and I mean that's partly to do obviously with the short wheelbase of this locomotive generally short wheelbase locos have a little bit more trouble picking up so based on that and the next 18 Dakota fitting what I do plan to do is install a stay alive in this locomotive because I think it's going to greatly improve its running characteristics so I can't do that with the Dapol Dakota that's in there so I will be getting possibly a lock pilot micro next 18 Dakota which of course you can connect a power bank to so I'll do that that will possibly come up as an update in another video just to see the comparison between the two so I really don't think I need to add anything more it's been thoroughly explained the plight of course that I've had with this locomotive and this video has really blown out into quite a lengthy video so you're probably all falling asleep or starting to yawn by now but I couldn't really reduce the length of the video or I didn't really want to do it in part one and part two I really just sort of wanted to get it out there maybe Rapido might watch this video maybe they won't but it's out there and I guess one thing that I'd really love to hear from others who've bought one of these locomotives and have had similar issues or even other issues it would be absolutely fascinating to hear your stories about your 15XX and of course I'd also be really interested to hear from anyone who has had no issues with their 15XX that would be interesting as well so before this video goes on any longer I will bid farewell so thanks for watching I certainly hope you've gained some insight into this Rapido Trans UK 15XX so do take care everyone look after yourselves of course don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time bye for now